you might have a balls of the wall computer that can do anything. Super powerful, snappy, maybe you got an X230 ThinkPad. Or maybe you have something more like this. This is a 15 year old Dell. Pick this sucker up off of uh, Craigslist for 20 bucks. With its 1.2 gigahertz single core, single thread Pentium processor and 512 megabytes of RAM, you can still use this thing. It's totally functional. In fact, I got Debian running on it. Even a machine like that can run relatively modern software. So when it comes time to do web development, I recommend using a combination of Tmux and Vim. I can't stress this enough. I basically just do web development and creative writing. I'm not an actual programmer. However, I do use Vim for a good portion of the work that I do. And I wanna show you my favorite setup for really basic web development using Vim and Tmux. I edit HTML, CSS, and Markdown files. I use Markdown and Vim for most of my creative writing things. I'm gonna show you how I use Vim and Tmux together. So one thing you gotta make sure, make sure your Tmux has your mouse support in. So if I think if I go to, so Tmux config set option dash G mouse on. That there's other stuff in here that got some themes and stuff. That's not really important to the project, but the mouse function is really what you wanna focus on. So we gotta go to our working folder. So I have under hack website projects and I think I want to do, oh man, website 2020. I can't remember if that was a good one or not. We'll find out. I start website projects and then quit them all the time. So now as we're in here, then we'll launch Tmux. That sets us in the right folder. First thing I do is I do a vertical layout. Oh, <laughs> a vertical layout. And I drag that sucker towards the bottom. Cause this is where I'm launching things. You know, it's kind of like the, uh, the code at the bottom. But I'm usually doing HTML and CSS together. So I'll do wrong door. I'm all over the place today. Uh, here we are. So V my index and V CSS. Awesome. And this, this works really good for me cause that gives me both those things. And then I usually use PHP to render the quick quick and easy dirty web web server so php serve local host 1313 and that's usually it uh, in fact if i open up mr web browser here i'm like hopefully this uh website's not tear oh yeah there you go so there's the website i was working on did i ever finish this one? Oh yeah this one's pretty good but um, yeah, that's kind of it. I like having this because I can have my folder access here on the bottom one when I'm not rendering. I can cancel that and LS. Um, if I close one of these, oops, I can just tree it out right here. It's not the same as like using Visual Studio Code or Atom, but the fact that this will pretty much run on anything. I don't know if you ever tried using VS Code or Atom on an ARM processor system or something really lightweight, not heavy enough, not strong enough of a system to um, run an Electron application. Um, good old fashioned Vim and Tmux together make a, a pretty powerful combo. Um, and you get a lot of the features. There's, there's ways you can set up, uh, the, I mean, I'm not gonna go into details of Vim because again, I've only scratched the surface. But you can really dial in and get everything from like code completion. Um, syntax highlighting is already set up in NeoVim by default. I have the number settings. It's a it's 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 a really amazing and powerful platform if you can if you can get over the, the tiny learning curve. That's that's basically my quick little tiny uh, workflow of how I use Vim and HTML development and creative writing. All right, so this is a quick little walkthrough. I recommend doing more research in Vim if you want to dive deeper. I mean, there's a ton of resources. There's a ton of different YouTube personalities that do Vim videos. Some of them are actually quite amazing. I definitely recommend you check some of them out. And that's gonna be it for now. Check you guys later.